Hello everyone. Hello everyone. This is House of Prayer Evangelistic Church Thursday night men's discipleship. I am your host, Elder Ronald Smith Jr. Middle initial P, if you needed to know. It is great to be with you again. We're going to ask that you would um, say something in the comments section. Uh, uh, send a thumbs up. You know, send the praying hand. Send something, men, to let us know that you're on. And uh, we are are encouraging you to stay interactive uh, as we are, you know, navigating through this difficult time. We're not going to stop doing the work of God. It's not too much uh, to do all the other things. So let's put forth the effort to navigate and continue to do the will of God. Hallelujah. You know, God is good. And that's not just a slogan of a, a religious ritual slogan. That's a right now statement. God is good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth endures. God does things that no one else can do for us. Somebody ought to say, praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. And so today we are, are just going to just take a quick moment to pray as everyone is, is connecting and joining. Um, we are definitely... We are definitely <clears throat> endeavoring to stay on the potter's wheel and to stay working on the wall. Amen. Somebody type in amen. I'm going to stay on the potter's wheel and I'm going to stay working on the wall. What does the wall represent? It represents what God is doing is endeavoring to do now. Hallelujah. There are some things God wants to do right now in the midst of chaos, in the midst of sickness, death, uh, uh, you know, uncertainty, financial um, uncertainty, you know, gas prices going up. Seems like they can just change the gas prices whenever they get ready. I was like, well, one day I paid a dollar seventy. It's the same gas that was in the ground that they made it one ninety nine. What's the what's the deal? But in the midst of this, we want to endeavor to let God make us who He wants us to be. So let's just pray real quick, man. Father, we thank you today for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for this opportunity to share with your men. We pray for the men that their hearts will be encouraged to press on in this fight of faith, that they will not succumb to the distractions of the evil that is in this world, that they will not become an innocent bystander, swept away by the many different winds that are blowing in the earth. We pray that your spirit will be the wind that blows and that cause us to navigate Cause us to navigate in this life. In this year of 2020, we will be successful because your spirit is our guide. Bless our pastor. Bless the deacons. Bless uh, uh, Elder Bird. Bless Minister Hawkins. Lord, all the preachers. Touch in the mighty name of Jesus. Touch our men. We need your helping hand. We need your provision. We need you in our relationships to help us be that man of strength. This is our prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Well, well, well. Here we are again. Another Thursday night. Men's discipleship. Remember, we have men's discipleship on the second and third uh, Thursdays of every month uh, we want to don't not come to men's discipleship or don't not tune in 
because it's, it's a ministry for you. And uh, there are things that we are learning because God wants us to continue to be a disciple. Don't think because you've got a title that you step out of being a, a learner. Yeah, the title does not mean that you're through learning. It's really time to learn. Once you have a responsibility, a position, uh, you have eyeballs looking at you, man, you need to learn some stuff. How to govern yourself and how to help others be what God purposed them to be. So the first thing we want to talk about is spiritual discipline of prayer, which on the last month we talked, on the last week we talked about, but today what I wanted to bring to the forefront in the spiritual discipline of prayer is confession and repentance. You know, it is it is paramount, it is necessary, it is of utmost importance that you pray every day. Uh, it is of utmost importance that you have a time of prayer. Now, you know, we pray always, so you may pray in your car, you may pray on the way to work, you may pray at your meal, uh, you may pray, Lord, have mercy, or, oh, Lord, I see this, help me, G give me the words to say, you know, those type prayers, but you also need a time of prayer. You know, Jesus stealed away, he just disappeared sometime, but he was going to talk to the Father. He was getting uh, his spiritual tank filled, he was getting his uh, necessary equipping, and this is what we have to do, steal away on purpose. But what I want us to focus on today and to kind of meditate on is that we must intentionally have a focus of confession and repentance. I want to read you something right here out of Matthew 6. This is what some people call the Lord's Prayer or the Model Prayer and where Jesus was teaching his disciples to don't be like the hypocrites, but pray in this manner. Well, here's something he says. He says, <clears throat> forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. There are some things, men, that we know we wasn't right. You know, you know he wasn't right. The minute you did it, your conscience, through the power of the Holy Ghost, agreeing with your conscience or speaking through your conscience, letting you know that that was sin. We know our sin. Some sins we know. And at the moment we are aware of our sin, that is the time to acknowledge and confess. Confession is important because what I'm saying to God is, I agree with you. You see? And, and this is so important because what we're talking about today is being peacemakers. But if, if I am not in agreement with God and I have unconfessed knowing sin, it puts me in a state where I'm not able to go forward in the other things God is designed for me to do because I have unresolved issues. And so confession is very important because I'm, I'm putting myself in agreement with God. I'm speaking with my mouth. I'm putting my spirit and my soul in a motion towards repentance, okay? Confession, confession, I must say what God says. And then repentance is to turn. It's a turning in action, but it's very important to be a turning of heart, a turning of the will, a turning of the motive, intense. The inner man turning, you know, I no longer take pleasure in what I now realize and confess is not right before God. Confession, repentance. Now, let's talk about this. In prayer, there are areas that we really 
have not come to the awareness of our wrong. Uh, you know, and I talk a lot about things I've done and do, but when we put ourselves in, in a disciplined prayer to confess and repent, in other words, I'm putting myself in a posture of repentance. I'm putting myself in a posture of confessing. I'm asking God to search my heart, uh, search my day, recall the things I spoke. If there's anything I've done, show me. That's a posture. See, I'm not feeling as if I'm impeccable. I'm, you know, infallible. I'm, you know, I, hey, boy, I'm walking tall and no. I'm humbling myself for there may be a possibility that I've done something that offended God, that was off the mark. And so I put myself in a posture to hear the voice of God, to hear the Holy Spirit, for my conscience to make me aware. I'm using the word conscience because you know, it's the Holy Ghost, but the conscience is the part of man uh, that communicates. It is the natural spirit in man through God communicates through the spirit of man by the Holy Spirit. So I'm using that word conscious, but we are relying not on our own faculty. We're relying on the, the work of the Holy Spirit in our life. That's what I'm relying on. Because listen, you can convince yourself, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. They should have never said what they said. Now, well, okay. You have just dumbed down your conscience. Right, wrong, discernment. You pour a bucket of water on your conscience and your discernment through reasoning. And so we have to constantly posture ourselves in confession and repentance. Put myself right before God to open myself for him to awaken me or make me aware of something I've done wrong. This is a discipline. And just get down and just Lord bless my kids. Lord bless my wife. Lord bless my job. Lord bless my supervisor. Lord bless my car. In the name of Jesus, amen. That's good. But what about the internal issues that may help you with your relationship with your wife? Because you're talking crazy to her. And so if the spirit will uh, waken you to how you're talking, then maybe your relationship could be a lot better if you change your tone. Hello. Now that one hit me, but it, it, it hits where it hits. We don't, we don't, uh, oh, I ain't going to throw that punch. No, it was the Holy Spirit just saying. Okay, so that's what we want to focus on. Spiritual discipline of prayer, confession and repentance. Always be in a posture to confess of anything. I don't care if it's 20 years ago. Well, you have come to the awareness of it. Father, forgive me. I didn't, I'm so, I didn't realize that I did that. But I, really, I did. I knew I did that, but I didn't realize how wrong it was. Help me, God, to never do that again. I turned from that type of mentality. All right? We're in good shape. Okay, so today we're just going to go into our lesson. Uh, we talked last week about uh, man. And our relationship with men in the earth, our proper perspective, you know, you want to have uh, uh, the right kind of relations, especially at a time of race, <laughs> so much racial tension, you want to have a right perspective. Because listen, everybody that's in the racially tense circumstance is not going to have the right spirit or the right thoughts. And so you must be the one who carries the truth of God, the character of God, and the right attitude because you are going to display yourself as the children of God. All men are created by God. They ha have his image. They have his likeness. So I can't be wicked. Now, I can discern and say, ah, that one I got to stay away from. But we ain't going to come in agreement. But I'm not getting ready to hate. I'm not getting ready to prejudge based on an outside set of circumstances like class, like race, age, gender. You see, that's prejudice. Just because I'm of a certain gender 
don't mean that I'm violent or become a certain race don't mean I'm angry. You don't even know me. See? Prejudice. We don't want to be like that. That's not the spirit of God. Okay? So today we're talking about uh, 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 being peacemakers in the earth. So let's go to Matthew 5, 9. And you know, there is so much that I have to say. We probably won't get through this all. But we're just going to see what time permits us to do. Uh, Matthew 5. Um, let's see here. Where am I at? 5 and 9. Okay. Here it is. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Now. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. I just love the Bible. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. So what I'm wanting to emphasize today is us developing the practice of being peacemakers. Why? Because... The peacemaker is identified to be one who is connected to and an offspring of God. Huh. So, a person who is the opposite is thereby concluded to be one who is not demonstrating that they are connected and an offspring to God. See, that's what you call deduction. All right? So from that, I, I want to have my name in the list of those who are the peacemakers. Because I am being identified with God. Oh, wait. I'm loving this. Okay? Now, let's go to Hebrews 12, 14. That's, just, that's our start. That's where we are. We want to be peacemakers because we are identified with God. Hebrews 12. Now. I'm starting to realize how much that little computer, it helps. Because <laughs> I don't flip a page when I'm on that little tablet. But it's good to be on this Bible. Okay, 1214 says, Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Uh, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Let's stop there. Now, I want us to know that we ought to be here, follow peace with all men, holiness without, no man will ever see the Lord. We ought to be in a constant pursuit of peace. Okay? Constant pursuit. That is, in our relations with others. We ought to be in a constant pursuit pursuit of peace. Now I want to show us something where we have to have wisdom and a realistic view of the world we're in. Now in our worldview as a follower of Jesus Christ, one who is born of the spirit, who has a heavenly mind, who does things on a supernatural order, in the kingdom of God, not on the principles of the kingdom of this world, I have an expectation of things that are beyond the earth system. But I must also understand that there is a limit to mankind based on their choice in the earth system. So just because I'm bubbling over with love and joy and peace and huggy huggy and kissy kissy, don't mean that every, everybody I come in contact with is going to rub off on them. 
but I am in a constant pursuit through wisdom, through discretion, through direction from God, through strategy, to have peace, to make peace. Now, I want to show us here, one of the hindrances to peace is the word bitterness. Somebody type in there, bitterness. Bitterness is, in the, in the Greek, it is the word pikria, 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 which means harshness. It is an embittered, resentful spirit, which one of the byproducts is hatred. And so if, if I am a person who allows the actions of others to cause me to walk away now with something embedded in me, it can produce uh, an embittered and resentful spirit. Okay? Let me just read it here in the Bible again. It says, Lest any root of bitterness spring up, trouble you, and thereby you can be defiled. Okay? It's talking about walking in the grace that God supplies. But we can fall short of that grace by not paying attention to what we allow to be put in us. You know, you don't got to accept everything people say. Somebody say something negative and something crazy to you. Oh, well. They got on a Ku Klux Klan thing and they burning crosses. Listen, that's their ignorance. I'm not getting ready to make that make me feel like a N-I-G-E-R because I'm not. You see what I'm saying? And so I can't allow someone else's wickedness to be deposited in me to cause me to be bitter, to be resentful, to basically now my spirit has changed. Once that happens, I'm, I don't even want peace. They ain't want peace. You know, they got a, a saying out, no justice, no peace. No justice, no peace. I understand the principle, but man, you better be careful of what spirit you're getting into. So you ready to tear up Kansas City? See, that's what that, that's you, you get to get that bitter spirit. You know, don't allow bitterness because of what someone else says or does to be deposited in you and now it grows into hatred. Okay, it's gonna trouble you. Why will it trouble you? Because now you can't operate in the grace that God is supplying. What is grace? It's the empowerment to be a peacemaker. Man. Boy, somebody will throw a tomato at the camera. Well, listen, I'm not trying to just throw shade on nothing. I'm just talking about principle here. No justice, no peace. That's all right, whatever. But keep your spirit in the right place. All right. Now, let's move on. I want to, I want to, yeah, let's talk about this now. Um, Matthew 10, 34. Let's just talk about this. So, I'm talking about uh, uh, the world. Now let's have not just a realistic expectation. We want to have supernatural expectation, but let's see things within their limitations. Okay? Now, Matthew 10, 34, it says, Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. I am come not to send peace, but a sword. Now, I did pull this little scripture out because I want us to see something. In the earth, there will be a division that comes based on truth. Truth, Jesus says, I am the way. I am the truth. Jesus becomes a line of division. He becomes a dividing line. So I cannot expect for everybody who don't accept Jesus to have the same desire to dwell in peace that I do. You understand what I'm saying? 
Yes, God does miracles. Yes, God can shake it up. Yes, God can switch, cast out a spirit and switch the whole spirit of a, 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 a people. But at the same time, Jesus is a dividing line. <laughs> I made the picture of being kissy and huggy. Listen, when you have the spirit of the devil, you don't want to kissy and huggy. You want to fight. You want contention. You want unrest. And I'm talking about just on the job or in the house, in the neighborhood. Some people's not satisfied until some, some stuff is kicked off. But Jesus is a defining line. That's why they will say you are the children of God because we're not operating on what y'all operating on. Hello? This is what we have to be a, a realist. Yes, people can change, but they have not yet. <laughs> oh, we. I wish Pastor B was here because he would give me a high five on that one. So, Jesus is a dividing line. Truth is a dividing line. And so when I start saying things that are truth from the word of God, from the spirit of Christ, you can expect there to be a resistance and a contention. You better expect it. But that's where the authority of God comes in. That we're not weaklings and chumps. We speak with authority. And we don't have to use our fists. Because there's more with us than there is against us. Lord, open their eyes so they can see. You understand what I'm saying? Man, that's the word of God. Now, let's, let's go to some other stuff here. Ooh -wee. Let me just go here. Romans 3, 16 through 18. Romans 3, 16 through 18. Now I'm kind of turning with my Bible because I don't want to leave everybody. And, and I've noticed that when I have it all on my tablet, I just go. And it don't give time for people to find it. And so I'm trying to find the medium here, okay? Uh, Romans 3, 16 through 18. It says, now this is talking about unsaved men. Okay? Man in his natural state. Depraved. Okay? That which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. So, Romans, I'm jumping down. 3, 16. Destruction and misery are in their way. This is a big word right here. Ways. Now, when we talk about ways, we talk about systems. Okay? It is the system by which things are done. Okay? Cause and effect. Uh, uh, you know, you shoot me, I'm shooting your whole family. You know, ways. And so destruction and misery are in their ways. So the way of man is destruction and misery. When man in his natural state is left to his own resolve, it's going to bring destruction and misery. All right? Now listen, and the way of peace they have not known. So here we go, they're talking about that word again, way. The way of peace. See, so... Peace is part of the kingdom of God. It's a system. It's a, it is a principle where, by which we are governed. And so we do things based off that principle that may not make sense, but it's a part of the kingdom of God. It's the way of the kingdom. I'm going to show you that too. But, but natural man does not, they don't know the way of peace. Listen to this next verse. There is no fear of God before their eyes. See, so it's a self-centered system. What gratifies me at the time may not be peace. It may be for me to tell you two or three things about your raggedy self. Forget having a peaceful relationship on the job. 
You, you made me mad. And so I'm going to cut you to the root with my words. That's the way of man. You cut me, I'm going to cut you deeper. Why? It's because the fear of God is not in them. See, not, oh my God. Listen, man. You cannot be a disciple of Jesus Christ if you don't have foundational, um, this is the word I'm looking for, characteristics. The fear of God. That is the beginning of wisdom. You can't even begin to act right until you are thinking, wait a minute, what's God going to think about this now? That's going to govern what you do. I can now be wise because, listen, I'm not trying to be under the chastising hand of God because I needed a couple of minutes to get my steam off. I'm going to do that. Why? Because I've been born again. Now that matters to me. But unrepentant man, man in his natural state, has no fear. The way of peace they do not know. So even though we're peacemakers, we can't expect everybody to have our agenda. Then don't be shocked when people will stick up the middle finger to you. When you say something about love and Jesus and peace and you know, I forgive. They will, man, come on. They will let the real devil come out. Don't be shocked. The devil does what the devil does. Sinners do what sinners do. We should be filled with power and we should be filled with the glory of God that we're not amazed at what the devil is doing. A middle finger is not about to throw me off my walk. Uh, uh, you got five of them. What's what? What? That's nothing. You get what I'm saying? That's nothing. But if I'm not walking in peace, I can let somebody's middle finger put me in rage. I'll break that finger. You see what I'm saying? It can, it can, how dare you? You know, that's, that's, the, that's the flesh. That is the spirit of man. That is, that is carnality, anger, contention. Violence, oh my God. the way of peace they have not known. Listen to this. Now, Romans 14, verse 17. Romans 14, verse 17. All right. Romans 14, verse 17. We in good shape. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. We're talking about God's system, his way. But the kingdom of God is righteousness. See that? Ooh. The kingdom of God, if you're going to be in God's ways, is God's ways is righteousness. Okay, the book of Jeremiah tells us he delights in righteousness, justice, and loving kindness. The kingdom of God is righteousness. Look at the next thing. It is peace. What? And joy in the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm just going to pull this one little part out. The kingdom of God is peace. So the whole system that we're governed by meaning God ruling in us, it is, it is peace. Wow. And so if I'm governed by peace, then my ways become the ways of peace. See, this is showing that Jesus came to bring a sword. Here it is. The, the way of peace they have not known, but I am governed by peace. Peace is my way. Oh, Jesus, I love this Bible. You know, it, 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 it is God's ways are not our ways. And so, therefore, I have to learn. I have to be uh, influenced by his way. And then I take on his way and I discipline myself to walk it out. We're talking about peace. 
Mm -hmm. I hear you saying, what, what is peace? It's the, it's the cessation of strife. Is where strife does not exist. And so though you rah, rah, rah in my face, I'm not rah, rah in back. Because I am governed by peace. Now let's, let's get with this. All right? Now I put this at the beginning, but I'm switching it up. So if you're going to, if you're going to, uh, well, let's go to Luke 1 first. Let, before I do that, Luke 1 now we're talking about Jesus. This is just re-emphasizing the same thing. The system we're in. The kingdom we're in. The way we're in. It is peace. But I would just want to see this about Jesus. Remember how I said Jesus came to bring a sword? Okay? So when we talk about peace, there's something prophesied about Jesus in the book of Luke regarding this. Luke 1, excuse me, Luke 1, man, this is, man, I love this Bible. 76, let's start back there. Luke 1, 76, okay? Now, and thou, child, shall be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his way. Uh-oh, I done tripped. I done lost my mind here. I done lost my mind. See, because that's talking about John the Baptist. Wow, look at that. I just lost my mind. All right. This is talking about John the Baptist. But look at it then. We're just still going to look at it. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet in the way of peace. Okay, well, it could be talking about God too. Jesus will guide our feet in the ways of peace. It's talking about John the Baptist, but it's also talking about God's purpose. So what I want us to say, what I want to say here, and the whole reason why I brought us here, is that, okay, Jesus is going to guide our feet in the ways of peace. So in order for us to be a peacemaker, we have to have peace. Did you hear that? In order for us to be a peacemaker, we have to have peace. All right, let's go to John 14. John 14, 27. You must have peace. John 14, 27. All right, here it is. These things, let's go back to verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, Give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And so Jesus gives, he leads us in peace, and he gives us peace. And so it's important for us to be people who possess peace. Now, don't fool yourself because you got saved in 1976, you still got peace. Jesus has given it to us, but sometimes we forfeit our peace. We allow our peace to be taken away. We allow something to possess its place. 
to be a peacemaker, you must have peace. Okay? Now, this peace comes from Jesus. It is the peace that Jesus gives. Okay? It's not, it's not something I get because I don't have a worry in the world because I got enough money or I don't have no problems. Me and my wife getting along real good and the kids are doing what we say. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a spiritual endowment from Jesus, from the Spirit of God, there is something indwelling in me that takes away the strife. Number one, between me and God. <laughs> You're going to be a peacemaker and you got strife with God? You don't have, you got unresolved issues, you have unconfessed sin, you know you did this wrong, you got too much pride to say, forgive me, I was wrong. You, you don't have peace. You don't have, you don't really have peace. You may have some, but you don't have peace. Okay? Within. All right? Uh, this comes from Jesus. Now, let's let's move here. Let's move here to John 16. We, we stand on that same thing. You must have peace. This peace that we're talking about is in Christ. Okay, so as I, as I continue in Christ, in other words, I follow him, I obey him, I submit to him, then I'm in him. I dwell, I continue, I abide, then I partake of the peace that he gives. That makes sense? John 16. Okay, we're going to wrap, wrap this up in just a couple minutes. John 16, 32. John 16, 32. It says, Behold, the hour coming, yes, is now come that you shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Now you know that scripture that we quote all the time that's we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. Well, here's, here's the addendum to that. And this is what the real full richness of what that represents is that I can endure something that's difficult without just over, you know, just just conquering. You know, it's good when you can just come in and just win, win, win. But what about when you lose? What about when the, the circumstances are not favorable? This is what Jesus is talking about. When you're in me, you will have peace. When you abide in me, you obey me, you follow me, you do the things that I say, you deny yourself, you take up your cross, you follow me, you will have peace. But while you have peace, you will be in a world that is full of trouble. And the trouble is going to affect you. You're going to experience it. But listen to what he said right here. He said, be of good cheer. In other words, don't let what you're experiencing change the sense of what you have in me. Because what you're experiencing, Jesus overcame it. Therefore, if I dwell in him with his peace, I can overcome the same mess. Do you know they put a bag on his face and punched him and told him to prophesy? Do you know they pulled the beard, the hairs of his beard out of his face? Do you know that they whipped him with Roman punishing suffering instruments? There are things that we will experience that will be trouble. But he says, when you have my peace, also remember, you can overcome whatever it is that you're facing. Man, that's the word of God, man. Let me look at another thing here. 
Oh, it's just so, just so much. <laughs> it's just so much. Having salt will help you with peace. Man, I'm not going to talk about that. All right, let's go with this last verse here. We're going to stop here. Romans 2, 9 through 11. Okay, we're going to stop with this right here. Romans 2, 9 through 11. You know, the Bible even tells us that prayer brings peace. When we let our requests be made known with thanksgiving, it brings peace. Somebody type in amen on that. Romans 2, 9 through 11. Oh, Let's go back to verse 4. Man. Let's go back to verse 2. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them that commit such things. And thinkest thou this, O man, that judges them which do such things and do the same? that you shall escape the judgment of God? Or despise thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance? But after your hardness and impotent heart, treasure up unto yourself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. Who, this is where I'm trying to get, who will render to every man according to his deed? To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil of the Jew first and also the Gentile. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that works good to the Jew first and also the Gentile. And so I'm closing with this right here is that peace is a byproduct of doing good. Doing what's right according to God's law. Doing what's right according to God's law. Doing righteousness, peace, honor, what was the other one? And glory are byproducts of me living a righteous life before God. Because God will reward every man according to what they do. So if you don't do right, but you're contentious, you don't obey the truth, uh, you, uh, you obey unrighteous, you're going to get the judgment of God. And guess what? What if his judgment could be the, the taking away of peace? Oh my goodness. Are you hearing me? You're, you're in a place of all you're doing is worry, stress. You got 101 thoughts of what can happen. Do what's right. Seek peace. Pursue it. Because God desires for us to be peacemakers in the earth. Well, we're going to stop right there. We thank you for your time. We thank you uh, for, for uh, lending your ear in this men's discipleship. Listen, don't forget we have our uh, Saturday, uh, Men's United will be at 3 p.m. Be there or be square, in the words of Pastor Crawford. Also, Friday night, evangelistic night. And then, oh, no Friday night, evangelistic night. No Friday night, 
Evangelistic Night. And Sunday, uh, what we got to call Park and Praise, beginning promptly at 10 o'clock, Sunday school at 9. Okay, God bless you. It's just a pleasure to be with you tonight until we meet again.